We begin with an item of news that has just come into our news center. A police constable was injured and four suspects were shot and killed in an early morning gunfight. The incident took place at the intersection of Charles and Kings Streets and King Streets rather near the Kingston Public Hospital. Reports are that the police responded to reports of gunfire about 1.30 a.m. Upon arriving at the scene, they were met with gunfire. A gun battle ensued between the policemen and the gunmen. During the exchange, a policeman from the Kingston West Division was shot in the hand. It's understood he's currently in hospital receiving treatment. A team from the St. Andrews Central Division provided assistance to their colleagues and they engaged the men in a shootout. When the shooting subsided, four men were dead. Four men were shot and killed and the police recovered five firearms, including rifles from the scene. The Independent Commission of Investigations, Indicom, and the Inspectorate Professional Standards Oversight Bureau, IPROBE, have been notified. So that's the very latest news coming to hand. The police and gunmen, early morning gunfight, about 1.30 a.m. at the intersection of Charles and Kings Streets, near Kingston Public Hospital, men in a vehicle challenged the police personnel. The police responded, police from the... Kingston West Division uh, intervened. Uh, one of their colleagues was shot. They got support from a team from the St. Andrews Central Division. And when the shooting subsided, four men lay dead. And the police say they took five firearms from the scene, including rifles. That's the very, very latest information we have. We hope to get some more for you as the morning progresses. Now to other news. Now, a prominent member of the Jamaican diaspora in the United States, Dr. Clovis Nelson, is urging his counterparts to resist misinformation and shun any activity which may hurt Brand Jamaica. Dr. Nelson is an education administrator in the United States. He holds a doctorate in educational and organizational leadership. A diaspora group led by Captain Rupert Francis has strongly criticized the government for what it says is inaction on a range of issues. Francis and his team have been criticized for creating confusion around next month's diaspora conference in Montego Bay by advertising a parallel event for the same venue at the same time. On Tuesday, Dr. Nelson used social media to accuse Captain Francis and his collaborators of spreading misinformation. Fellow Jamaicans, I am Dr. Clovis B. Nelson, encouraging all Jamaicans home and abroad to unite in vigilance in the face of actions which are not in the interest of our country. We stand at a critical juncture in our nation's history. Despite the tireless efforts of the Andrew Holness administration to propel Jamaica towards first world status, a small but vocal group of individuals in the diaspora seeks to discredit our beloved country on the international stage. Through misinformation, along with misleading and inaccurate narratives, we must not let them succeed. According to Dr. Nelson, while there's much work to be done, it's clear the efforts of the Holness administration have been transformative. As one people, we must stand vigilant against actions which are not in the interest of Jamaica. There is no doubt that the Jamaican economy is in the best shape it has ever been for a very long time. The government has been able to pass on benefits to the people by cutting GCT, increasing pensions for senior citizens, funding available for youth to attend the Heart Trust Skills Program free of cost. Let us unite, my fellow Jamaicans, to protect brand Jamaica against the forces of division and misinformation. Dr. Clovis Nelson. Health Minister Dr. Chris Tufton says there's no truth to claims that the government spent $21 billion on the renovation project at Cornwall Regional Hospital in St. James. During his contribution to the sectoral debate on Tuesday, Dr. Tufton told the House that the sum includes expenditure on multiple other health facilities in western Jamaica. This $21 billion is being banded about either without proper understanding of the expenditure or just an attempt of mischief making. First of all, the 21 billion includes expenditures on Falmouth, on Noel Homes, on building out a new accident and emergency, the previously uh, Mount Salem Clinic, a new diagnostic center outside of the main building. Because for those who care to know the truth, they would appreciate that we had to build a hospital around the hospital to continue the services. 
The health minister says the allegations of cost overruns on the renovation project are false. There is a difference between cost overrun and rescoping of cost because what is being banded about as cost overrun is not cost overrun. What started as fixing a ventilation system morphed into the stripping down of a 10-story building and a replacement of every single window, every single door, every ward, every operating theater. So in effect, what we are doing is building a brand new hospital for the Meanwhile, Dr. Tufton says the Jamaica Labour Party is the best option for Jamaicans who want to see continued improvement in the healthcare sector. He made the point on Nationwide at 5 on Tuesday. We had three years of downtime of that eight years because our focus had to be on COVID. My appeal to the people of Jamaica is that those three years, we managed to maneuver to keep most Jamaicans safe. We should be allowed the opportunity to continue on this journey uh, to get to the point where we see more tangible benefits of the investment we have placed on the ground. That sounds like an appeal for a third term. Absolutely. And I'm not afraid to say that. The JLP, this government, under Andrew Olney, is the best choice for the country at this point in time. I don't want to question the intelligence of the Jamaican people because they're all intelligent people no matter what our education level is. But it is for us as our organization to make that case. Dr. Tufton is acknowledging that the government has work to do in improving its relationship with the Jamaican people. I don't criticize polls. I'm not in the habit of that. My function, I prefer, is to see how I can improve whatever is discerned by the people and to respond to their sensitivity. If people perceive a particular thing, it may not be the reality, but it's my job to try and make that connection between their thought process and what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So I think we have a lot of work to do. I am the man on the bridge for help, and I will do my part to ensure that we make that connection. And I think, I think that's the big challenge that we face at this point in time. Dr. Chris Tufton, Minister of Health and Wellness. The principal of Homo Technical High School, Hedron Mikulski, says he'll be appealing to the Caribbean Examinations Council, CXE, for consideration in its grading of the exams that were underway at the time of Tuesday's bomb scare. Homewood was one of three schools affected by the incident. A number of our students were in active external examinations. Um, it was just about half an hour before the examinations were scheduled to complete. And so a number of them were through with their examination others were in active writing i strongly believe that those who were in active writing were affected um but i wasn't able to have that conversation with them i will speak with them tomorrow to, to better understand how they were affected following that i will continue my dialogue with cxc to see how best we remedy this situation Principal Mikulski says the incident, which the police have since declared a hoax, has far-reaching implications for students and the education system. I just want to appeal to the persons out there who may be involved in these kind of practices, these activities, to desist from doing so. We're talking about the future of our country. We're talking about persons who've been preparing for this day, these days, for many years. And it's very unfortunate that on the actual day of their examinations they are faced with these kind of um, disruption distractions and so i'm really hoping that moving forward our education system will be free from these sort of disruptions hadrian mikulski principal of homo technical high school in addition to homewood located in manchester threats were recorded at kingston college and campion college in st andrew the overseas examinations commission oec which administers cxc exams in jamaica says it will be making representation to the regional exam body on behalf of the affected schools executive director of the oec hector stevenson says the commission will also be working with schools to implement more tangible measures should any more threats be made Opposition spokesman on finance Julian Robinson says the Bank of Jamaica must answer questions about the continued impact of its interest rate policy. Mr. Robinson was reacting to news that the government intends to maintain the BOJ's inflation target at 4-6% to 6 for the next three years. 
Minister, I think it is important for us to ensure that the BOJ comes to the Parliament. I think they, my understanding, they're supposed to be here twice a year to explain their thinking and the rationale for this. Um, I haven't had an opportunity to read in detail the table documents. They are continuing the 46 range, which has obtained for the three previous years. The reason is, I think we are now seeing for the first time the impact of the high interest rates on the performance of companies and the general slowing down of economic activity. The government failed to meet its revenue targets for the last fiscal year. This was due to a fall off in corporate income taxes. It's believed the BOJ's high interest rates impacted company profits, which in turn affected the amount paid by those companies in corporate income tax. Mr. Robinson says as things stand, the BOJ must come before Parliament and justify its approach to monetary policy. So I think it's important for the parliamentarians to have that discussion with the BOJ. The BOJ is independent and what they do obviously has a significant impact on the overall economy. And there is need for, given the issues with revenues falling below projection and the likelihood that we may remain with elevated interest rates given the, there are more downside risks to inflation remaining high than in coming down. So I just want to urge you, let us have those discussions with the BOJ and let, us, let them come here and provide the rationale for the decisions. I'm not against what they are proposing. I'm just saying it needs a fulsome discussion given the impact that it has on the economy. Julian Robinson, opposition spokesman on finance. He was speaking in the House of Representatives on Tuesday. Opposition spokesman on industry Anthony Hilton is raising alarm about the country's trade deficit, saying it poses a threat to economic stability. Mr. Hilton says while the domestic picture appears positive, the state of the country's external accounts is cause for concern. For example, the country, the country currently imports about 90% of its productive input, 90%. For the first 11 months of last year, imported goods and services amounted to almost $2.1 billion dollars or 30% of total import, while fuel, which accounted for 26% of total imports, were running at almost $1.8 billion, US that is. The total imports by value for the first 11 months of last year were almost $7 billion US dollars, while total exports amounted to US only $1.8 billion US dollars, leading to a trade deficit of five over $5 billion. Close to 50% of the import bill goes to support the country's consumption habits. The external account of a country is its balance of payments with other countries as represented by its import and export of goods and services. Historically, Jamaica's imports consistently outstrip its earnings from exports. Mr. Hilton says the balance of payments problem will only be remedied once Jamaica transitions from a low-growth economy. Mr. Speaker, with only six years remaining for Jamaica to meet its Vision 2030 and the UN Sustainable Development Goal, or SDG, SDG, there is increased urgency to put corrective strategies, policies, plans and programs in place to even come close to achieving the targeted level of inclusive growth and development envisaged by the UN, by the United Nations Agreed Initiatives and our own national consensus, Vision 2030. Anthony Hilton. Overseas news now. The Israeli military says it has reopened the Kerem Shalom crossing into Gaza, a key terminal for the entry of humanitarian aid. The crossing was closed over the weekend after a Hamas rocket attack, which killed four Israeli soldiers. But the United Nations Agency for Palestinian Refugees says no aid has yet entered and there is no one to receive it on the Palestinian side. Workers fled during an incursion by an Israeli tank brigade on Tuesday. That limited incursion did not appear to be the start of the full-scale invasion of Rafah that Israel has repeatedly promised. But the prolonged closure of the two main crossings could exacerbate the humanitarian crisis in Gaza, where the UN says a full-blown famine is already underway in the north.